Hey everyone, this is Rob Nelson, uh, half of the Rob and Jonas's channel, and I thought I'd do a Draw My Life video for you, and I know these were really popular a couple years ago, and I'm a little bit late, but I do think that it's a great way for me to explain a few of the important life events that have shaped who I am and um, why I do what I do now. Basically, my life philosophy. Um, but I'm not going to start as a baby. I'm going to start my story in 1999, when I was 19 years old. I was in school to be a marine biologist in Australia. A fun tidbit, by the way, that's when I met Jonas. Um, anyhow, I saw a video presentation there about the Great Barrier Reef by some local filmmakers, and it was just so awesome. And I went up to them afterwards and I asked them, how would somebody like me get into doing that? And they told me to just get a video camera, even a small handy cam, and start telling every single story that I could. And so that's basically exactly what I did. For the next five years, I worked as a biologist and documented everything I studied. In 2001, when I was in grad school in Hawaii, I was paying my tuition by teaching undergraduate lab classes. And I used to have to show these terrible science videos that came with our lesson plans. And the students were just so bored by them. There wasn't any YouTube, so I decided to make my own. And I thought, I'm gonna go outside and show these students what these animals are really like. And I was really kind of surprised, but they loved it. So fast forward a couple years, I decided that while I was finishing my degree, I was gonna go all in into using video to help inspire the public to get excited about biology. So I self-funded my own documentary. I, I basically bought a quality camera, uh, six plane tickets for my friends, and a $150 1976 Chevy van, which by the way, didn't have any seats bolted to the floor or air conditioning. And so we had to drive the 7,000 miles through Mexico with the door completely open. It was super sketchy. And together, we made an hour-long documentary about the biodiversity of Mexico. And then when I got back to Hawaii, I was in so much debt that to save money, I bought a 20-foot sailboat for 900 bucks. I anchored it 200 yards offshore and spent that next year doing my research and editing the documentary. However, that's when I had a minor setback that really would change things dramatically. I can now say that I was stupidly planning to sail my sailboat to Australia, and on one fateful day, having not checked the weather, I sailed into the storm of the decade and sank it a few miles offshore. I nearly killed myself and the partner that I was with that day. Fortunately for me, the US Marines sent out helicopters and rescue boats and saved us both. That's the short story anyway, it was all pretty dramatic. I probably shouldn't be alive. The point is, all of my research went down on the ship, including everything that I owned. My cameras, my computer, my data, everything. I think I remember that day more than any other day that I've lived so far. I, I really did change that day. It's not that I stopped taking risks, which is what I thought might happen. Instead, it made me think about what was important. All of a sudden, school, grades, a degree didn't matter as much. All I wanted to do was make a difference in the world. I wanted to share, and I wanted to become less selfish. Fortunately for me, my family was there. They helped lift me out of that hole. I redid my research projects. I rebuilt what was lost, and I decided to finish my PhD program early and focus completely on my filmmaking. And that's because it was the one thing that people seemed to respond to the most, and it was something I felt I was good at. Fast forward a few more years, I got a second master's degree in science filmmaking, and I decided to start a company with Jonas and my friend Hazen Adele called The Wild Classroom. And it was really cool. Together we made videos about science. We started a podcast. It was a really big success. We got lots of awards, and every episode we had over 70,000 downloads a day. And that's when Pearson Publishing saw what we were doing and asked us to replace the Discovery Channel as their video content producers. And we were just thrilled. We finally had a job that paid more than $12,000 a year and we'd make a difference for students. We changed the name to Untamed Science and we made 400 videos for them, making it so that every student in America likely came across our videos in their schooling. But with the economic crash, so too did all the funding for us. We had a small team of 12 people that overnight, more or less, I had to tell they were unemployed. The problem was, none of our videos were online. Um, unless you saw them in school and looked us up, you may never have heard of us. It was 2012, I had a small baby, no future income, no real online presence, and I kind of started to get depressed. I used to watch the science YouTubers online and see their success, which felt so random at times. And all of a sudden, I started second-guessing all of my choices. It was ridiculous. I kept thinking, we 
should be there too, but couldn't seem to break that YouTube algorithm. Eventually, I started making weekly YouTube videos. Even though I had no day job, I had no steady money flow, I produced videos for a few clients on the side to make ends meet. I even got in with a local agency and worked as a model, which somehow I'm still kind of embarrassed to tell people because all I wanted to do was make science videos. Now, I have maybe a few too many YouTube channels which are all growing, and I've had a great opportunity to work as a biologist on several TV shows. Of course, with two kids to support and a job that fluxes as much as this, it's always hard. I don't know if it's ever going to get easier. But I will tell you that it's this channel that I do with Jonas that I love making the most. I mean, you guys are a great audience. You leave comments and you make us feel like what we're doing is really useful. And that's all we could ask for, even though I'm not making the inspirational science videos here on this channel. I feel like maybe the greatest impact I can have is to help others learn to tell their stories that I don't have time to tell. I don't know. Anyway, that's my story, at least the part I thought you might like to hear. I look forward to teaching and sharing more with you in the future. Thank you.